Um, I find one, one of the most common questions that people have for me as a creator is, where do you find inspiration or what's your process? People are curious about the process. I'm, um, I'm a professional songwriter. I have been for over 20 years and a teacher for almost the same length of time because I found as I went out and performed my original songs, people did not just come to hear my performance of my original songs. They wanted to know how I did it. Um, but I don't believe that you can think your way into this. So this will not be a passive lecture. I'm gonna speak for a while, but I want you to get out a pen and a piece of paper. Um, I don't want you to do this on a computer and I don't want you to use a pencil. Um, if you have a typewriter, as I do, you could use that. But what is forbidden is an eraser or a delete key. The urge to edit is the destroyer of worlds. We're going to all only move forward um, so another important thing to know is that I'm not going to make you share what you've written. You can write about dark, terrible things, embarrassing, shameful things, frivolous things that nobody cares about. In fact, I hope you do, uh, because the things that we find the hardest to talk about are usually the things that matter the most. And whether or not you share them, I feel like that it's, it's important for you to write them. Um, creativity is why we're here this week. It's a natural human ability. I think that creativity is a natural function of the universe as a whole. I think the universe is creative. Um, however, in our culture, we've been taught not to trust the kind of thinking that is necessary for creativity. And I wanna break through that a little bit. For those of you who are raised with a sort of Western European descended culture as I have been, we're taught not to trust our feelings. We're taught not to trust intuition. So people come to my workshops and often they expect that I'm going to teach them some kind of rational step-by-step -step process for writing songs. Uh, and later, much later in the songwriting process, I think our conscious rational mind becomes a very good decision-making tool. But in order to get started, and in fact for most of the process for me, the rational mind is inadequate to the task of creation. So there's, uh, there's a widely used psychological test called the gambling task. Sometimes it's called the Iowa gambling task. Um, participants are shown four decks of cards and the cards either reward you or penalize you. And two of the decks are riskier than the other two. Two of the decks, some, some of the cards give you huge rewards and some of them give you enormous punishments. So for most people, after about 40 or 50 cards, drawing 40 or 50 cards, they stop drawing from the riskier decks, but they can't explain why yet. After about 80 to 100 cards, then they, their logical mind has figured it out and they can explain why they're avoiding those other decks. But the remarkable thing is they have sensors on their skin and the sensors can detect what's called skin conductivity. So it's like your sweat glands just make a little bit of moisture and your skin is more conductive. And people started to sweat just a little bit after 10 cards. And later when they were asked about that, they admitted that they, they got nervous that they had a feeling about something after only choosing 10 cards. So your intuition, it's, it's, I guess what the, the cultural reason we're surprised that intuition is not only much faster than logic, it's often more accurate and in many cases it's more useful than logic, is that ever since Isaac Newton began to define what we call science today, we've progressively idolized rational thinking and logic and we've rejected intuition. So I think that's why artists and creators seem so different or special to us in our culture um, in this very fact-checked, sort of peer-reviewed culture that's honestly afraid of feelings a little bit. So it's unreasonable to dedicate your life for any substantial amount of time, or even just today, to this frivolous task of writing a song, of making something beautiful. <clears throat> so how do we fix that? If we want to be more creative, we want to learn a new creative discipline, or we want to learn more about our current creative discipline, we need to learn how to trust our subconscious and actively work 
on engaging our subconscious, our intuition, our gut feelings, our emotional intelligence. There's a lot of words for it. <clears throat> so I think if you stop to think about all the things that your brain can do without you thinking about it, <clears throat> excuse me, it becomes apparent how huge your subconscious mind is and how incredible it is that it's handling millions of bits of data while your your conscious mind is seriously debating whether to have ham or turkey for lunch. So how do we learn to trust literally most of our brain? How do we heal that relationship with our intuition and, and foster and grow that relationship? So one way that I do this is by getting out of my mind and into my body. And what that means for me is that there is some physical process of creation. So I was just in the uh, music panel with Louisa and she talked about playing the drums and getting uh, different drums and playing some things that she, that she had never tried before and, and, and dancing, that how she liked to dance when she was creating. And, um, and someone else in the panel immediately said, yes, yeah, so you get into your body and it gets you out of your mind. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. But even the process of moving a pen or typing on a keyboard is physically engaging with the idea and getting into your body and activating your subconscious mind even going for a walk without your phone, um, which I have to remind myself, can get you your subconscious mind activated. Or if you want to think about left brain and right brain, the left and right sides of your body are moving, and so you are activating both sides of your brain. Um, the, oh, when I am doing that, when I'm physically engaging, like even writing, my pen says things that surprise my conscious mind. It happens all the time. And I hear other writers talk about this all the time, how um, the feeling that an idea has come out of nowhere or has been given to you or that your characters suddenly take on a life of their own. They disagree with you about what they're going to do. But that never happens when they're just thinking about things. It always happens when they're in the physical process of writing. So. The other way that I tap into my intuition is by giving my mind a task that doesn't make any empirical sense and sort of break logic. Magnetic poetry is this really great example of this. And in fact, it was invented by a songwriter. It was invented by um, Dave Capel, this is his name. And he was trying to do exactly what I'm saying. He was trying to get beyond his reasoning stepwise mind to find something that would inspire him. So he cut up words and the words kept getting blown around. It was hard, these little paper words. And so he got some magnets and he put them on the magnets. And then friends came over to his house and they started playing with these words. And he saw how fascinating they were. And that became his whole business. Um, but it's actually both of these methods at once because you are also physically moving things around. And whether something is a word is above one or below one or whether the word is to the left of one or to the right of one, uh, would make a difference in how you interpret the combination of words, right? Or uh, as, as George Carlin pointed out, that on television, you can prick your finger, but you can't do it the other way around. So I'd like to give you a few words and a question. And you can only use the words I've given you to answer this question. And remember, I'm not going to make you share this with anyone. This is just, you are only accountable to yourself here. So I have two questions to choose from. And the first thing I want you to write down is which question you're going to answer. Question number one is, what does an angel smell like? Question number two is, why did the dog sneeze? You can answer either question, but write the question that you prefer down right now. What does an angel smell like? Why did the dog sneeze? Okay, now that you've written down your question, I'm going to share my screen. And on the screen, it's just I'm just using the whiteboard. I'm going to have a set of words up there. And you have to answer this question that you've chosen only using the words that I have provided. All right? 
and I'm going to give you one minute. This is fun. All right, I think I'm being generous about a minute there. Now, I want you to look at what you've written and find the thing that feels wrong or maybe surprises you or it could have been the thing you wanted to erase or maybe you actually crossed it out with your pen or maybe it's just your least favorite part. Maybe you like everything pretty good, but it's the part that you didn't, didn't work for you. Take that thing and write it in a new space. It could also be the thing that you didn't write down. You thought about it, but you didn't write it down. You didn't think it was good enough. It could also be that. You can write that in a new space. And now I'm going to give you a different set of questions. And let's see, how do you do this thing where you go, oh, there we go. That's it. This new set of questions, I want you to answer, don't, don't even think about it like the quality of what you're doing. Just answer these questions about that thing that I just had you write down again. Just read these questions and I'll give you a couple minutes to answer these questions for yourself about that thing that I just had you separate. I think that's 
It's probably long enough. Thanks, Alberto. He says, this is awesome. Appreciate it. So my guess is that by now, you have felt something. Maybe a tear came to your eye, or maybe you laughed out loud, or you felt you were surprised, or you felt uncomfortable, you were confused. I want you to trust your body. When I feel something like this, I call it trusting my body. So a very common question at songwriting workshops is, how do you know when a song is finished? Like when it turns pink, I, I don't know. I know how to tell when I'm onto something. And that is when I feel something. And I call that trusting your body. Maybe I feel uncomfortable or surprised or suddenly I'm sad. But that is when I draw a line around that part of what I'm working on. And what that line means is don't go messing around in here. This is important. This made you feel something. The way it's rhymed, the way it's broken, the way that you don't like it, whatever it is that's in there, it is magical. And Alberto brought this up last time in, in the last panel, how um, it's weird because you've never heard it before. And that means that you just created something original. But if it makes you feel something, it's definitely worth sitting with it for a while until it starts to feel like something. Um, so I want you to do that now. I want you to draw a line around the thing that made you feel something. Ambivalence is a feeling. Confusion is a feeling. These are great feelings, important feelings. They're leading you somewhere, and I'm telling you to trust them. Draw a line around that thing. So also, once I draw a line around this part, I start asking myself questions. And this is something you can do tonight or after this week or something. Does anything else I've written relate to this thing in some way? If I only had the words I've already written on this page, how could I use them to help me elaborate on the feeling that this one thing gives me? How could this set of words be sung? What melody or chords sound like the feeling that I get from these words? So I'd like to end this by giving you just a few other ways to get started in a similar process of mining your subconscious mind for inspiration. And um, I don't know how I can give this, like it'd be great to do a handout. Can I do something like that, Sarah? Does that, um, can I send in a document that the conference could share with the? Yeah, yeah, you can send a link in the chat if you'd like or screen share a document. So if I screen share a document, can the other people get it? They can take screenshots. Um, ah, here we go. Right, right. Screenshot a document. That's what you mean. Ah, okay. I'm 50. I'm still catching up. Okay. Um, so for that, I'm going to do this then. All right. So describe the feeling in physical terms. How long is sadness? What color is excitement? That's a good way, fantastic way to break into your subconscious. Two, go to a local, local bookstore and look at only the spines of the books. Write down anything that jumps out at you and then sit down with that list and write what you think the books are about. There's a website called wordclouds.com. You can take any text, you can copy it from an ebook or some website, and paste it in here, and then you click go, and it will make a, a word cloud. It mixes the words up, and makes colors out of them, and puts them in random orders. And you can write a poem from the word cloud. I do this, I wrote half of my last book of poetry, I wrote that way. Um, it's also related to a method called the cut-up method where you take, put words on paper and actually cut the paper up and then mix them around physically, which is a whole different process and leads to an entirely different set of ideas. 
Again, tapping into the subconscious. Four, right from the point of view of someone completely different from you, but don't do any research about it, just from what you know. If you're a man, try writing from a woman's point of view. Willie Nelson talked about doing this and writing songs, writing from a woman's point of view. If you're conservative, conservative, take the liberal viewpoint. Invent two people who are different from you. Give them a disagreement to work out. And using pen and paper is especially helpful in this one. I find that when I write dialogue, I, my urge to edit is even stronger. But just try to keep forward motion. If your character says something that, that you didn't want to say, just say, oh, I'm sorry, that's not what I mean. Let me try to say that again. And that's what your character says. Your character is saying all those things. That are in your mind. Number five, this is a good one. Go help somebody. It doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter how. Get some flowers for your mom, help her move her couch, give up a, 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 an unopened bottle of water to a home, homeless person. Just go help somebody and then come back and sit down and write. And I think that you, you get outside of yourself and there are so much more, more interesting things to you that are outside of yourself because you've already been through all the things that are inside of yourself. And helping somebody, for me, helps to break that barrier and get me outside of myself. Yay! Did everybody get, everybody here uh, needed to screenshot this or? Uh... Okay, good. Let's stop this here. I, uh, I hope that this has helped to give you some ideas, just new things. And I do this all the time too. I go, I ask people or I just search for like ideas for inspiration. I search the internet and try things. And I think physical, getting into your body, um, getting something physical going on. Who was it else was it that mentioned? I guess it was Ethan in the last panel that mentioned, yeah, getting into your body. It's a big one. And do something that doesn't make any sense at all. Rumi. Rumi was incredible for that. Just incredible. Rumi and, and, uh, and Mary Oliver. They're like two sides of the same coin in some weird way. Both of those, they, they put things together that don't make sense. And suddenly they make sense in some new, incredible way.